this pin is right angles or 90 degrees from my hand, correct? Nope, not if you're a shear sharpener in the United States. In the United States, if you have a pair of shears, that is zero. <laughs> doesn't matter, it may be so in the other countries as well, and it doesn't make sense to me. If you're a knife sharpener, that would be 90 degrees. For a shear sharpener, we consider that zero. I guess it's because there's no angle on it. I don't quite understand it. But if you are reading literature or you're watching videos and we're talking about degrees of your shears, um, you need to understand that there is a difference between the two angles. I made this little chart that kind of compares knife angles to the angles that we use in the United States. This is also the angles that they use in Asian countries. If shears made in Japan, this is the chart of shears made in Taiwan, China, all those countries. This is the, the angles they go by on the, the sharpness of the shears. But this is what we measure in the United States. So for instance, if you pick up literature and it says the shear should be sharpened at a 30 degree angle, and you do it at 30 degrees in the United States, when it should be 60, you've got a very blunt shear. And your customer's not gonna be very happy. So, and I actually made that mistake well, in my early years of sharpening. There was a shear that had, a, had literature from Japan about what the degrees was on it. I followed it and it was like, man, this is a dull shear. So, um, if you have, and some people have sharpening equipment that, that has the numbers for the angles for this rather than angles for that, um, you may need to make up a little chart to help yourself learn. Do you remember from, um, physics and maybe from geometry talking about the complementary number or the complement to where you take 90 and you subtract the degree from it and that's a complement number long way back but so 40 minus 90 would be 50 so that's the complement number so you subtract everything and you notice the 45 degrees is in red that's the one degree that's the same either way. And it's interesting enough that 45 seems to be the most um, perfect angle for the least amount of push uh, and pushing the hair and cutting well. That doesn't mean all shears should be 45. But if you make a shear at 45, um, a good you know, beauty shear, 45 seems to be the optimum angle. Now, does that mean all of them are that angle? No, and let me tell you why. If you are sharpening a shear that does a lot of slide cutting, it needs to be a really um, nice shear um, for slit, slithering through the hair, very, and I use the word sharp. Sharp has actually two different meanings. Sharp can be a more acute angle, or sharp could be more consistent edge. I'm using the word sharp for a more acute angle. So a sharper shear, would be these higher numbers in the USA. So a shear like our fishbone shear should be sharpened at 60 degrees. Now is that the best angle for cutting? No, not if you're doing straight slide, straight cutting like cutting my across my bangs, but if you're doing slithering and sliding and you're razoring with the shear, yes that is the best angle. And you've got to have a really good metal. You can't just take any shear and put a 60 degree angle on it and expect it to perform. However, if you have a shear that's a lower quality steel, or it's designed just for straight cutting, or you're in a situation where the person needs that shear to keep an edge for a long time, and they're not trying to do any fancy slithering or sliding through the hair, you may want to go with a more blunter angle. A lot of your thinning shears um, will have a blunter edge because they're not slide cutting with them. So understand your angles. You can customize the angles to how the shears are used. A lot of the shears that may come new as a 45 degree angle, even a 50 degree angle, if they're used in a salon where I know they're just doing straight cutting, they're not wanting to slide, they're more interested in how long those shears go between sharpening, maybe it's a situation they can't get them sharpened that often, or they're using them really on some very coarse hair, an abusive situation, maybe the shears are getting older, I'll drop the angle down to 40. Um, so that gives me a stronger edge. It's less sharp, but it's a stronger edge. So understand your angles. If you're a hairstylist, it's okay to ask your sharpener, what angle did you do my shears at? So you'll know. 
And if they don't know, they're probably a freehand sharpener. And any, you know, some of them are very, very good and can kind of guess what the angle needs to be. But uh, a lot of your freehand sharpeners have inconsistency in going from one shear to the other or, or sharpening from one time to the next. So it's, it's helpful maybe to even ask your sharpener what angle you sharpen, you know, are you sharpening my shears at? I have some stylists that have two shears of the exact same shear and I'll sharpen one at a 40 degrees and one at a 45. They use one for cutting children's hair when they're doing straight cutting and then they use the other one for their wet cutting and slide cutting and this type of thing. So understand your angles if you're here in the United States, if you're watching the video from another country. Maybe this will help a lot of the things we talk about in sharpening on our videos in the United States make sense to you.